And just like that, another beloved entry into the Marvel Cinematic Universe has concluded. Now that the dust has settled on the critically acclaimed WandaVision, there's only one thing left to do. <coughs> get it, crap, beat. And that's get excited for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. By now, you all know how these Marvel stories work. Each new entry into the MCU's canon acts as an advertisement for future heroes and villains, ensuring future stories have no shortage of powered characters to keep the MCU going. Even though we've been advertised a show where Captain America's best buds beat up on Purple Rain and the Wendy's mascot, everyone and their mama knows we're only watching to see who Marvel brings into the fold next. While most of Marvel's heavy hitters have already graced the silver screen for Disney, none are more anticipated than Marvel's newest acquisitions from Fox. Though it's likely far too soon to see the likes of the Fantastic Four or the X-Men on Disney+, that has not stopped Marvel from offering us the first steps towards getting the most famous X-Man into the MCU. And if this theory is correct, it'll be Carl Lumbly to start us down that path. I'm Hudsonus Prime, and I invite you to join me before Flyboy and the Commie Crusher take center stage to find out how Mr. Lumbly will help set up not only the Young Avengers, but the indomitable X-Man Wolverine into the MCU. Now, it goes without saying, we're going to be diving into spoiler territory for this discussion, so you better ski daddle if you don't want to know what's been going on on the set. For everyone sticking around, feel free to throw me a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're liking what you're hearing and you think I deserve it. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to the theorizing. As with all educated guests work, the best place to begin is with what we know. And anyone familiar with getting the scoop on upcoming Marvel projects? knows that IMDB is the best source for leaks outside of the Lego aisle at your local store. Since Marvel knows this as well as we do, several actors confirmed for Falcon and the Winter Soldier have yet to have their roles confirmed. Among them is actor Carl Lumbly. Mr. Lumbly's single episode appearance alludes to a small but important part of the narrative. Knowing that the Falcon and Winter Soldier will dive into the complications of allowing an African-American man to hold the mantle of Captain America... The legacy of that shield is... complicated. It seems very likely that Lumbly will be playing Isaiah Bradley, the first person to wear the mantle of Captain America after Steve went into the ice. Retconned into the Marvel Comics tapestry in 2003, it was revealed that Isaiah Bradley was the single successful survivor among 300 black candidates used to recreate the super soldier serum that transformed Steve Rogers into Captain America. Though he survived the treatment, the serum later damaged his body and mind, leaving him in a mentally degraded state. While there is little non-circumstantial evidence to support this theory, yet, odds seem high due to Isaiah's familiar connection to Elijah Bradley, the leader of the Young Avengers. With Cassie Lang being aged up in Avengers Endgame, Kate Bishop appearing in the upcoming Hawkeye series, and WandaVision introducing us to Billy and Tommy, Marvel is clearly moving pieces on the board to bring the team of young heroes into the MCU. Eli Bradley, known as Patriot in the comics, is a founding member of the Teenage Team, and introducing Isaiah prior to Eli's introduction is necessary to explain his connection to Marvel's past heroes and his choice of codename. While Carl Lumbly playing Isaiah Bradley helps complete one future MCU super team, his military history opens the door to a far more interesting portion of Marvel history, the Weapons Plus program. A government program designed to create biological weapons, their shenanigans are responsible for several prominent heroes and villains in the Marvel Universe. Their research through more than 15 iterations have produced not only the super soldiers of Isaiah Bradley and Steve Rogers, but thanks to retconning, also Luke Cage, Agent Venom, Nuke, Deadpool, Man-Thing, Phantom X, the cybernetic animal team Brute Force, and most famously of all, Weapon X himself, Wolverine. Though commonly believed to be the letter X, it's actually the Roman numeral signifying Logan as the 10th weapon in the program's history. Since Captain Rogers and Mr. Bradley were part of Weapon 1 and Wolverine was part of Weapon 10, we may still have a bit of time to wait until Logan shows up in the MCU. 
Though I don't believe we will see Marvel's hairiest killing machine appear in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it will most certainly lay down the foundation for his entrance. Unlike most other mutants that simply need an explanation for their X-Gene, Wolverine is more complicated due to his origin and history. To do him justice, Marvel needs not only to establish mutants and Weapon Plus, but also introduce adamantium as a stronger metal than vibranium. With most of Marvel's remaining slate consisting of Eternals, Spies, Sorcerers, and Kung Fu Masters, odds are good that if a stronger metal is making its way into the MCU, it'll show up in a project where humans are using tech to keep up with a world increasingly filled with miracles. There's nothing more horrifying than a miracle. Whether or not that project happens to feature metal arms and winged jetpacks remains to be seen. Whether or not we get adamantium in Birdman and the single arm Soldier, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has already begun the work of introducing Wolverine, announcing the beginning of their work on a future film designated The Mutants, and including one of comic Wolverine's favorite stomping grounds, Madripoor, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Marvel is only an amoral government agency and one super metal away from bringing Logan home to play. Rest assured that if Mr. Lumbly is introducing Isaiah Bradley into the MCU, the Weapon Plus program and the super-powered soldiers it produced will not be far behind. And that concludes my theory for today, boys and girls. But what I want to know is, what do you think of all this Weapon X talk? Are you as excited to see Wolverine in the MCU as I am? Or are you more excited to see the Young Avengers grace the silver screen? Or are you just one of those pandemic-weary fans just ready to finally see Black Widow and Taskmaster throw down after an extra year of waiting? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much to everybody for watching this far in. If you're still here, please be sure to like and subscribe as it helps out my channel and it gives me the raw strength and power I need to make more of these videos. Be sure to keep an eye out for more theory videos on this channel and pop cultural conversation with my colleagues over at The Way We Nerd. As you can imagine, I got those links in the comments below. Until next time, folks, as always, good luck in your adventures and Godspeed.